Hey everybody, coming at you from my gear room. Uh, the heat index outside is like 108, maybe 110, so it's time for an indoor video. <laughs> now today's topic is going to be hot weather survival kit. All right, and There's definitely a big difference between a cold, cool weather survival kit and a hot weather survival kit. Big difference. Now, this might be a long video, but you're going to have to bear with me because I'm not going to be like, I'm not going to be like, okay, you got to carry this, you got to carry this, you got to carry this, you got to carry this. I'm going to explain, I'm going to explain everything, why you should carry it, why you shouldn't carry it, how to use it, what the benefits are, and why you should use it for hot weather. All right. Uh, and I want to reiterate on this. Nobody should ever do exactly as I do. The main reason that I do these videos on these kits is just to give you ideas. You can either do what I do or take ideas from it, but it's basically a discussion to kind of show you what I carry and what works, what doesn't work, and, you know, just take ideas from this and build your own kit, you know, for what suits you. Because, like, you know, it may not be as hot where you're at. Humidity may not be as bad. The bugs may not be as bad. But pretty much hot weather is hot weather. So uh, let's get get down to business on this topic. <laughs> I, I've always been a big advocate on being prepared. All right, because it's better to be proactive and be, being prepared. And the old saying, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So. But a lot of people don't like carrying actual kits, you know. So, <clears throat> my philosophy is, uh, why not make it easy to carry? So, a while back, I did the survival jacket. And what this is, is it is a jacket that's been modified where the liner has big pockets inside it. There's a pocket on this side, there's a pocket on this side, there's a pocket here, and there's a pocket here on top of the pockets here and here, right? Now, that is wonderful for having a kit stored away in here for cool weather. But now somebody mentioned one time during that video, or a couple of people mentioned, they're like, you know, you wouldn't wear that in the summertime. So that is very true. You would not. But so I got to thinking about it. How about pants? <laughs> Let's, let's, let's explore having a hot weather survival kit in your pockets of your pants, okay? So before we get into the contents of the survival kit, let's talk a little bit about pants. and Because I think i got something that's going to be pretty interesting that you're going to like. <laughs> let's have a look at good outdoor pants. How about some nice, cheap, old-fashioned U.S. military woodland camo pants? Now, what are great about these, all right? A lot of them, you can tie them off on the bottom. You can you can blouse them around your boots to keep bugs from getting into your boots. They have side pockets here, which is nice for putting things in. You've got your front pockets, you've got your back pockets. It's got a reinforced seat area. So these things are a dime a dozen. They're everywhere. Now let's move over here to this, the digital camo pants. These, I think, were called UCP, Universal Camo Pattern, and everybody hates these. These are horrible pants. <laughs> they hate them. These are a dime a dozen. They're at thrift stores. They're at Goodwill. They're everywhere. But these things, there's a little bit of an improvement to them. They have the side pockets, and they're slanted at an angle, which is good. And, of course, they got these pockets, reinforced seat. they got back pockets. But they've got pockets added down below on the leg, which is wonderful. Well, there's another little trick to these things that I'm fixing to show you. Let's move down here. The next generation is what's called multicam. Okay. These are great. These have the slanted cargo pockets. They've got the little pockets down by the leg. You know, you can pull them to blouse them around your boots to keep insects and bugs from getting in there. Uh, but let's look at something else. Reinforced back seat. You know, it's got the side pockets. Well, let's look at something else right here. What did they do here on the knee? Let's just reach under here and feel. Is that double wall? Nope, it's not double wall. The knee area is sewn in. Every pair I've seen is just like that, and that's just like the woodland camo. But these, 
right here, check this out. These have a large area for, the, is, there's Velcro here. Let's lean you down here a little bit. There's an area right here that, that's, that's Velcroed for a knee pad. So not only has it got the side pockets and the pockets around there and the little pockets here, but it has this place. And so I was thinking, instead of putting knee pads, wouldn't it be great to put like, say, a tarp in there? And see, well, let's turn this around this way. Put the tarp in there and then close it off and see there, you've got your padded knees right there, but you've got gear instead of a pad. All right, isn't that great? Okay, so this is going to be the basis for our survival pants. All right, but what we're going to do is we're going to go through our kit first, and then when we settled on our kit over there, our pieces, we're going to put them in the pants. All right. Typical minimalist, minimalist survival kits usually have these little survival blankets, these little mylar blankets, or maybe even a, these mylar reflective tents. Or even these little Mylar tack bivvies. So <clears throat> any of this Mylar reflective type material, most of it was reflective on both sides, but nowadays they've got it to where it's orange so that for higher visibility. This is the kind of stuff right here that's good for winter kits and cold weather kits, but you got to think about hot weather for your shelter. Would you want to sleep in this in hot weather? No. You're going to swelter it, and it's probably going to dehydrate you. Everybody adds garbage bags to their survival kits. A garbage bag, eh, it's small, maybe, maybe not. Maybe you could use it as a roof. I don't know. But it's not very durable. This is more of a... To me, this is more of a, a, a cool weather survival kit because not only could you crawl inside it, but you could fill it full of leaves and lay on top of it. And it's like having a portable mattress, a portable mini mattress. You know, take two of those and you can make a heck of a bed. Uh, really, rather than that, I think it would be better to have like a little mini tarp. Like if you can find like a five by seven, really small tarp. Uh, that's good for a summertime survival kit. So we're going to put that in the... Yes, we're going to use that. And another thing you can do is like, uh, this is a Big Agnes footprint. This is a waterproof, high quality footprint for a tent. And you can actually use this as a mini tarp. Because even though it's hot weather, you really don't want to, you really don't want to, um, you don't want to get wet if you can help it because it might, in certain situations, it might kind of cool off at night. But anyway, just think about that. A, f a footprint for a tent would make a good tarp. Okay, so that's another option for a shelter. This, <clears throat> USGI poncho. See the size of that? That's good if you got room to carry it because it can also be your shelter. You can wear it to keep the rain off of you. It could be, sh be you know, your shelter. But this is really too big. You might could put it in a cargo pocket, but we're going to kind of discount this. We're going to put this in the we're not going to use it pile. Uh, to me, these little portable ponchos are good because not only are they small, but they're small enough that you can carry two because you can wear one and use one for other purposes, maybe sitting on the ground. If you rip one, you've got another. And you can get a bright color that way because this is not bushcraft or camping. It's a survival kit. So you want to be seen. So you'll want something visible. So this will be this will be your your rain protection. Uh, now another thing you gotta think about is in the hot weather, you're gonna have you're gonna have bugs. You're gonna have bugs, you're gonna have ticks, you're gonna have scorpions, spiders, there's all kinds of stuff on the ground. So if trees are available, it'd be great to have a hammock. Hammock campers in the winter use an underquilt and overquilt because the wind blowing underneath them cools them. That'll be to your advantage in the hot weather. But now the thing is, bugs are also around. So look at the size of this. This is a hammock with a bug net. Just a hammock is a little bit smaller, but then you got to have suspension. So 
Is that going to fit in the pockets of a mini kit or your pants? No. So what I like to do, now a lot of people, they complain, that's going to be in the no pile. Uh, a lot of people complain about these net hammocks. But the thing is, you're not on vacation. It's a survival kit. You're just trying to not die. <laughs> so these net hammocks, they come with rope. And all you do is you simply just tie them off to the tree. Let's see. You just you use this rope and you just tie it off to a tree and then you'll sleep see the, the old-fashioned jungle net hammock type thing well the thing is is this could be used for other things too you could use this uh food is a low priority but it'd be nice to have food so you could actually stretch this during when you're not sleeping at night you could stretch this across a creek mouth or use it as a gill net uh, and there's probably other uses for it, but this is very, very, very minimalist right here. So I would say that this is a good option for a shelter. Now, there's a couple other options here for a shelter because shelter is not just, in my opinion, shelter is not also, it's not just where you sleep at night. It's all, shelter is also protection from the elements, which includes bugs. So we're going to go over that too. In my mind, Another basic part of shelter is not just sleeping at night, it's sheltering from the elements, okay? Uh, some people like these thin sleeping bag liners because they're just to use as like a survival type bag. The problem is, is if you get like these uh, polyester ones, they're not waterproof. And they don't offer protection from the bugs because all this is is just a bag. Now it does have a zipper in it but the problem is, is with the opening, let me find the opening. Okay, with the opening, as you can see, it's just an opening. See how the edge is? It's just an opening, and so you can't seal up. Even if you were laying it, you can't, you can't seal yourself up from bugs. So what I did is on my sleeping bag liner, I added, let's pull this out and look at it. I added... I sewed around the top and I added a cord with a cord lock. I added paracord. That way you can cinch it up around your body or around your head or around your neck or something. That way you can seal it out. Now that's a little bit bulky and see this is like a polyester and so that can't be made waterproof. So those two are out in my opinion. But what I use is the infamous Morris Kohansky always called it the survival scarf, but basically, because he said you would wear it as a scarf. Well, in the summertime, you're not going to need a scarf. Well, what this is, is this is a very lightweight sack that is made out of, out of um, ripstop nylon. And there's two different ways of using this, and I'm going to show you how. This is the same thing with the cord lock. It's got the cord lock on one end where you can seal it off. And then on the other end, it has a window with a net, just like that. All right. Now, before I demonstrate the two different ways of doing it, this is going to be into the end of yes. We're going to put this in our survival pants kit. That's going to be a yes right there. All right. Uh, before I show you that, I'm going to show you a couple other things about bug protection because this is going to go with that. Uh, it'd be nice, it'd be in summertime, it'd be nice if you would, if you had a brimmed hat. That way it keep the sun from baking you, burning your ears and burning your face. But this is about as minimalist as it goes for bug protection. Let's just slide this over your head like this and see. You could even wear something like this when you're in that hammock and then put your hat on top. But Now they don't make these, uh, that's not going to be in the, we're going to carry it with us pile. <laughs> this is now what this is is this made by grabber outdoors it's a pop-up field hat uh, I don't think they make these anymore when I found these things I bought about four or five of them because I love them because in hot weather and especially down south you need these so what you can do is you just put this on and it's a hat all right or you pull this net out 
And see, not only does it offer protection from the bugs, well, there's a string in there. <laughs> not only does it offer protection from the bugs, but it offers protection from the sun, and it holds, it'll hold the net away from your face. So, part of bug protection is not being miserable from being ate up. Now, this is without a doubt going in the yes pile. Because like I said, hot weather and bugs is just a hand in hand. So that's going into the yes pile. And we're gonna we're gonna see if we can get all this to put into the put into the, our jacket. Now here, here's another thing right here. If it's hot enough, I'm gonna show you this. What this is, is this is an actual look, this is made out of net. Okay? This thing right here, this is a full pullover, pullover with a hoodie. Alright? And it's even got it's got a cord lock right here. So I'm going to show you this right here too, all right, before we, we move on. So here's our bug shirt, and I'm going to demonstrate that. I think this is by a company. Hold on, let me grab the wrapper. I think Bug Out. Bug Out. I kept the wrapper. Bug Out protective wire. I bought a bunch of these years ago. All right, so what you want to do with these things, and see it's even got a... It's got a pull cord on the bottom. Now this is something like if you were hot, <clears throat> if you're hot, you're not going to sleep in your hammock with no shirt on. But you might, if you had to, you could you could wear this thing. Okay, now if you could bring a couple of extra look. When you walk around during the day, you can have your hands like this. But these little things that the women use to put their uh their hair in a ponytail. You can put these over the end like this because the sleeves are so long and you can tie them off to where bugs won't get in. Alright. Now on this net right here, you zip it up and it's got a pull cord where you can pull it all the way down completely over your head. Alright, so if you had to, you could take your shirt off and you could feel the breeze but not have the bugs on you. All right. So that's one thing. Now, this is so small and so lightweight, this is in the, yes, we're going to bring this pile, all right, along with the hat. Now, I'm going to demonstrate the two ways that you should use. Now, you can't, this, this survival scarf, I'm going to show you the two ways that I use it. One way you use it by yourself, one way you use it with this thing. All right. uh, you can't do what I'm going to do with a regular sleeping bag liner. One of the ways to use this is, like I said, this thing has got a cord lock and it's got a bungee type material instead of paracord so that you can pull the bottom shut. Now, this thing is about eight feet tall. So, <clears throat> if you can, if you have trees, and you can use your hammock. That's fine and dandy. But if you don't have trees, then you're going to need something like this. Right. Now you can... Let's see, where are we at? Okay, here we are. Alright, now see? You can either lay on the ground or what you do is you pull this thing. This thing is plenty long enough. I don't know if you can see it or not from the from where I'm sitting. Ugh. But you can pull this thing. See where my feet are? Ugh. Let me try to stand up. <laughs> you can pull this thing all the way down. Let me move it down. This is I know you're getting a kick out of this. Let me move the camera down. All right, this thing, see where my feet are? Look how much material I can drop down. And so you can drop down and you can completely enclose yourself in this thing. Now, the other way to do this, the other way to do this is you step inside it like that. 
and you pull it all the way up to here. Then you take this, oh, and then you sit down and you'll lean against a rock or like say maybe if there's one tree, you lean against it or if there's like a pile of dirt. So you take your hat, you put your hat on, pull down your bug net, and then you pull this all the way up. Now this is the reason why a regular sleeping bag liner doesn't work. Is you have to have one that will cinch up. And you cinch it all the way up right here. Okay. And see, this way you can breathe, but bugs will not. They can crawl all over this thing and they won't get inside it. And you'll just lean back against a tree like this right here and go to sleep. And if it rains, you're not going to get wet because this ain't a sleeping bag liner. This is ripstop nylon. This is thin. And the other thing, you could uh, take off your shirt and your pants and so that there's nothing between you and nature but a thin layer of ripstop nylon in case it gets good and hot. So that way you won't overheat. But like I said, it's summertime, it's hot weather, it's all about bug protection. But, you know, this is so small, this is a good option. And then this thing right here, you can use it day or night. It's just some kind of a bug head net. All right. But if you can use the hammock, that's even better. So I think that about covers the shelter option of things. Let's move on to the second most important part, hydration. Got to have that. After shelter and bug protection, to me, hydration in hot weather, in the heat, in the summer, hydration is really the most important thing. Now, in my opinion, uh, almost everybody carries, like bushcrafters and things, will carry some sort of a canteen. And a lot of times they will carry a canteen, and that's only two quarts of water. And then they will carry one of these that's got like a cup in it, like this, so that they can like boil water. But the thing is, really, do you want to have to deal with fire? No, you don't want to have to deal with the fire. So if anything at all possible, you want to avoid this. Not to mention the fact that this doesn't fit or it won't fit into your survival pants. So we're going to cover that. But really, anybody out hiking at any point in time, regardless of your survival kit or what's in your pants or what's in your, your jacket, I feel like you should carry some sort of a canteen. All right? Like carry one on a strap like this. They make these... these uh, hydration pouches or the good old-fashioned two-quart canteen carry that you know don't go anywhere without water in the hot weather in the summertime but the problem is with these even if you're carrying water how are you going to replenish it all right or what if you don't have it with you so let's take a look at a few options here what we do have you can carry with you all right this is uh, the Sawyer squeeze and the thing I like about the Sawyer Squeeze, let me show you something. It comes in that they, it comes in a bag like this. Now, the beauty of this thing is, is let's see, where's it at? I had. Okay, well, let's just use this bag. You can you can tailor this down. You can take all this stuff out, and you can tailor it down to where you just have the pouch, the cleaning device, and the filter. And then what you can do with that. As you put it in there and you slide all this stuff into your your cargo pocket and see this stuff will this stuff fits down to something really small but the beauty of it is is when you fill this thing up right here this is uh, 32 ounces if you want to carry 32 ounces of water with you you can actually use this bag to carry it see that's what's neat about it so that's the Sawyer squeeze that's that's one of my favorites there and then we have yet another option. Let's take a look at this. This is the uh, this is the Sawyer Mini. It's a little mini filter. And then you always need the plunger for back washing it. And then there comes with a straw, and then it comes with a smaller pouch. Now the thing about this is you can take this stuff out 
and you can put it these bags right here when they come with this little clip you can make it to where you fill this up with water and you drink whenever you're at a water source and then once you've got this thing filled up like I said this bag here can be used as a carrier and you can strap this to your belt and you can carry around your water with you so that's yet another option and then you have this other option this is made by life straw now I don't like the regular life straw that you just kind of suck through a suck through the straw I have to have some sort of some sort of a device for for carrying the water all right so you got this and then you've got this this is how you uh, back plunge the uh, the filter you take it apart like this I can't remember how it does it I think you take it apart this way yeah so you've got a way of cleaning your filter because the clean water goes through this way but you back plunge it back backwards when it stops working but with this thing what you do is the filter is in there and you just dip this in and get your water in there and then you drink out of this and it filters the water now you can carry water in this let's squeeze this get this air out of here now this comes in a, I think it comes in a pretty big thing like this right here. And what I did, I put a longer, see this right here? I put a much, much, much longer cord on it. And you can do this with these other bags. That way, you can fill this, once you fill that thing up with water, it's not going to go back in your pocket. You can tighten that up and you can carry it. So you can carry it like that right there. So if you got a long enough paracord, you can carry that like an actual canteen. All right. Now, the other thing, Morris Kohansky had said something about, he said something about using it, taking a balloon and putting a balloon in a net. So another thing like that, I found this, and I'm not sure. I think you can get these things online. So here's a net, and what it does is this thing actually breaks down. This hoop, it breaks down. The problem with that is, is you're not going to get that. You're not going to get that in a pocket. But what you can do with this thing is, you can pull this net off. Okay, this net goes on this hoop. You could easily make this out of a branch out in the woods. And so the beauty of this, let's see how we're going to do this now. Now let's go at this other way. Now these nets are real cheap. I thought I had an extra one. I got an extra one around here somewhere. Let's pull this off. Because all this is is this net is sewn on. Uh, it's sewn with like a loop around it. You don't have to carry the little breakdown frame. Matter of fact, I think this thing comes with an extra one. But the idea behind this thing is, is nets are good. Okay, you've got a net right there. Now, you can make a, 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 a hoop out of a, a small sapling. Now once you've got this net, another thing you can do is if you have a giant balloon, you can fill a giant balloon full of water and you could run paracord through these ends and then you could carry your water. Like if the water is few and far in between or if you're going to stop for the night and use a filter to uh, filter a bunch of water, then you can carry it in this net. Now the other thing with this thing is, you could also make a hoop with it, and you could use this for like, if you're in a creek, you could maybe catch freshwater shrimp with this, or you could catch crawdads, or maybe even fish. So, you know, if you need food, if, if, if like a one day situation turns into multiple days. So this net is a definite must have. So we're gonna put that in the to-go pile. Uh, some of the other things that you can do, they have these little, little bags like this that have these th this is a, a micro cool towel and you can wet it down for hot weather this is so small this is like a must-have you can wrap that around your neck with it wet and it cools your uh, arteries and everything from overheating those are good uh, that's so small, that's like for hot weather, I think something like that's a must-have. They also have do-rags that you can put over your head that are good to carry. 
So we're going to package that back up and that's going to be in the to-go pile. And then we're going to pick one of these water filters here. Probably going to carry this one, I think, because it's got the long cord so you can turn it into a canteen. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can use it. If it's really, really, really bad water, you can carry some uh, coffee filters. And you can use these as a pre-filter. As you can take your bag, let's use this bag. Because you can take that paracord and you can hang it from a branch. And then you can take that coffee filter and you can open it up. And say so they have bags. There's, it's called a mill bank bag, and it's for it's for pre. It's not really for for filtering. It's more for like pre pre filtering the sediment out of something. And see, so if you want to, you could put a you could put a coffee filter in a bag like this, and then have the water go through that coffee filter, and then drip out here. And if you have a container, you can catch it in a container. So anyway, that that's good. Coffee filters, those are good. You can carry those. You can do a lot of things with those. All right. And then the other thing, they have these little round things here for storage for if you're going to stay put, like say, uh, if you're going to stay put near like a broken vehicle or an ATV or a snowmobile or a crashed plane, but water is a mile away, you can carry one of these little things. It's called a kitchen sink. And what it does, this holds five liters of water. And so this thing pops open just like this. This is very, very heavy duty. This is more heavy duty than a balloon. But this thing, it pops out. This is made by uh, Sea to Summit. But that thing actually holds, once you fill it up with water, it'll hold five liters of water. And look, it's got handles. It's got two little handles on each side for carrying it. See, that way, whenever you go to a creek or a river or a lake, you can grab five liters of water and then walk back to your uh, campsite and then you can use your, your filter to filter your drinking water instead of having to go a mile at a time to get water. So this is a good option here if you have room for it. So just because of what this is, I think I'm going to put it in the keep pile. All right, so we've gone over shelter and we've gone over water and shelter and bug protection and water. Those are the three most important elements of them all. Now we're going to get to the basic survival odds and ends that we may or may not need. Right. Are you going to need a machete? Are you going to need an axe? Chances are you probably won't need an axe. Uh, are you going to need a machete? Maybe you're wearing a machete. I don't know if you wear one when you, when you hike or not. So, <clears throat> uh, As far as tools go, you can take a multi-tool because a multi-tool's got a knife in it and all kinds of other little things in it. So we're going to throw a multi-tool in that pocket. Do you want to carry a small saw? They have these little silky pocket boys. They have two different sizes. You can see the length of the blade. This little one doesn't look like it does a whole lot, but it does. Now, as far as fire goes, I don't know. I don't know if you'll need fire or not. Maybe for signaling. You're, during hot weather, you're going to want to try to avoid fire if at all possible. But this could be maybe used for shelter building or for just, in general, cutting whatever branches. So that's going to be a to-go item. Paracord. You want to bring some paracord or do you want to bring some regular cordage? This is a lot lighter weight, but this will do more. And if you have to, this has seven strands inside it. You could use the smaller strands for maybe dental floss or you could use it for fishing line. So how about a little tiny fishing kit? This thing takes up so little room... Eh, why not? That's going to be in the odds and ends. Let's carry a sufficient kit. Now, a fire kit. Let's take a look at a fire kit. How important is a fire kit? It's very important in the summertime, in the wintertime. So, a lot of times in the wintertime, I'll carry two kits like this right here. Now, what do I want to carry in the summer? Eh, preferably I want to carry one that's got some candles. That way if I have to, if I need, if... If push comes to shove and I need some light, that's what I'm going to use. All right, so I'm not going to bring two fire kits. Let's bring one fire kit. We're going to put a big band-aid over it, just like that right there, so that the contents don't spill out. Now, as far as fire goes, uh, well, I mean, as far as light goes, looky here. You want a little head headlamp. And you want one that this switch can't be pushed. You want one that the switch has to be lifted, okay? 
you want to lift it and it clicks into place. That way when it's bouncing around in your pocket or your kit, it won't come on. Like say this is a neat little light that's got a clip on it, but you can just mash the button and it comes on and it blinks. Now this is a good light for survival type signaling and stuff, but the problem is, is what you need to do is you need to put this inside some sort of a tin or a container to keep this button from being mashed. So let's look in here for a minute. We have matches and we have a lighter. How important, how important is fire? So what we're going to do is we're going to put our, we're going to put our, um, our um, light in there if it'll fit. But problem with that is, let's take that piece out. Our candles, let's see if it'll close now. All right, so you close it. And then you open it and you make sure the light doesn't come on and it didn't. Now probably what we'll do is we may put a few matches over in the side here. Or let's see, wait a minute, let's see if we can put two lighters in there. There you go. How about that now? Two lighters, a light, and candles. Okay. Close it, open it up, make sure it didn't come on, close it back. Alright, so we have our fire kit with a light. And then we have a headlamp, a little mini headlamp. All right. Now we're going to have, is there any reason to carry a ferro rod? Eh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'm not going to. How about a couple of hydration packs? All right, that'll be good to keep you from uh, getting dehydrated. Let's just put that in a little bag here, just like that. How about a little headlamp in our bag, just like that right there? And then this is where you get into all your little odds and ends. Little uh, paper, uh, what do you call these things? Safety pans, yeah, for like securing fabric together or maybe even for digging out splinters. Put them in the bag. A little piece of wax tender, throw it in there. How about a whistle? A super, super, super high-pitched whistle. Not a normal one. That goes into the bag. This is the odds and ends bag. How about a compass, all right? You're gonna want a compass because if you've seen my video on how to get unlost, you're gonna need this to navigate your way out. So, in the process, how about some paste beads, all right? Let's take some paste beads and let's put two sets of paste beads in there. All right, so this is what I like to call the doodad bag. This is all the odds and ends and there's room for some other stuff in there, okay? Whatever you think your kit, whatever you think your kit may need, all right, that's the doodad bag. Now, as far as being seen, other options are a little bitty pen light. This is okay. You can throw it in if you got room. Uh, a vest. A yellow vest. It's mesh. It's not too hot. and has reflective strips. I think that's good because if you're going to be walking at night and search and rescues looking for you, this will reflect. And another thing too is, uh, I don't know, just the reflective qualities of it is a good thing for being seen. And this is a tiny, tiny, tiny one. This is like a summer one. So that's going to be the to-go to go pile. Um, first aid. Let's talk about first aid for a minute. Sometimes you can get these little bitty kits like this little bitty tiny kit but it's a plastic kit and it's got all kinds of little doodads in it antiseptic uh, biofreeze triple antibiotic ointment uh, band-aids well something like that that'll fit in a pocket that'll actually fit up in a shirt pocket and so I suggest carrying a small kit like that in your pocket at all times now do you want a backup kit okay well how about this how about a metal kit with another first aid kit all right because if you put it in a metal tin like this let's put a band-aid over it that way if anything happens to this plastic kit this won't get smashed now because of the pockets you can put a compression gauze unopened put that with it and I'll show you how it goes into the pants now one other thing this is called a paracord 
look how small this is. How small it is. Now, how many times have you been like, I'd like to have a place to see it. But if you sit on the ground, there's ants, spiders, ticks, all kinds of stuff. Well, you sit on a log, you get ants all over you. Well, what this is, this is a paracord pocket seat. Now, let's move this thing down. Check this out. All this is, it's double layer ripstop nylon. And it has paracord slid through in three different places. On the end, in the middle, and here. Now, the thing is, is you tie this between trees, and it gives you a little place to sit. There's no backrest, but this is just a place to sit. This is so tiny that you can bring it. And it's also, if you, even if you don't use it, you could slide the paracord out. And there's several feet of paracord here that you could use if you, if you had to. So we're going to fold that back up, and then that's going to go in our pants. All right. Or pants survival kit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load these pants up with all this, these parts and pieces, and then I'm going to show you how they, how they, how, what, how much can actually be put into a pair of pants like that. <laughs> okay. So here are the pants fully loaded. Let's take a look. How do they look? They're a little bit bulky. They're a little bit bulky, but this is a do-all complete kit. You can take away from it. You can add to it. So now what we're going to do now, get the camera back up. What we're going to do now is I'm going to take these pants off. We're going to lay them on the table. And we're going to see what all can fit in these pants. Now, I don't even have a belt on, and they're not pulling down, but I think I, if I hiked enough, I would need a belt or maybe suspenders. Uh, but anyway, we're going to take these off, and like I say, this is this is a full kit. Uh, you can add to it, or you can take away from it. You don't have to carry all this, but this is to give you an idea of what you can do. All right. <laughs> so let's see what all fit in. All right, so here's our pants laid out. And like I said, this is a full kit. You don't have to carry all of this. Some of it's redundant, especially the shelter. So, what we're going to do, let's start with this little bitty pocket right here, down on the side. Let's open this thing up, okay? <clears throat> we have the paracord pocket seat, okay? That's one item right there. And we have the fire kit. We have the fishing kit. And stuff down in the bottom... We have that green net that I was talking about that you can make a hoop for. All right. So, let's see. Can you see that part? Yeah. All right. Okay, so that was that little bitty pocket that carried all that stuff right there. Now, let's go over to the other little bitty pocket on this side. Let's open that up. Now, what is this? This is that little tiny bug net that you pull over. So, let's set that right there. You pull out these two. What have you got? You got your first aid kit. And then you've got a pack full of the gauze compress. All right, so let's lay that right there. All right, so that's in that little bitty pocket. Now, <clears throat> here's our knee pads, okay? So that when you lean down, you protect your knees when you're not using this stuff, okay? Five by seven tarp. You can either use it as overhead tarp or you can use it as a ground cover. Let's lay that there. Let's open this other one up and see what we got. Man, that's some good Velcro. You ain't got to worry about nothing falling out. Okay, this is our survival scarf slash sleeping bag. All right, there's another thing. Let's close that back off. All right, now let's take a look right here. What's in this side pocket here? We've got that Climacool rag for keeping, for getting it wet and keeping yourself wet. And we have in here the bag with the long cord that I decided that you could sling it around you and use it as a canteen. So what do we have in here? We have the Sawyer Squeeze with the backflow part. And then we're carrying two bags so that you have the capacity 
to carry 64 ounces of water. Okay, so we're going to lay that over here. Alright, so we've got 60, capacity of 64 ounces of water with a filter. That way that's not like just carrying a canteen, because once you got a canteen, when you run out, you run out. That you can refill, okay? That was a side pocket. Now, let's try this other side pocket. This other side pocket, 50 feet of paracord. So let's lay that right there. We have a silky pocket boy. You can bring it, you can't bring it, either way. We have a multi-tool. And then we have our redundant shelter, our net hammock. So let's put that right there. All right, now is that everything? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's something else in here. Look, I forgot. I had crammed something else up at the top. The yellow vest, the reflective yellow vest. Look at that. It was crammed up above where the, the, the uh, tarp was. Now let's go up here to this side pocket. <clears throat> now I've left room. I didn't put a whole lot in here. Okay, right here I put, now these really should be in the back pocket. Anything soft and cushiony should be in the back pocket in case you sit down. But there's your rain protection, two hooded ponchos. That's your rain protection and that's your potential signal device. So let's stack those two right there. Now let's look in, I think that's all in this pocket. All right, so there's, and there you go right there. This is the little ditty bag full of all the different survival doodads. All right, we're starting to run out of room on the table here. And then in the back pocket, and all this stuff you can take away, you can add or take away. In the back pocket, we have the bug jacket. Now, I didn't do a good job of folding it up. But I wanted to put something in the back back there that you could sit on if you had to. That way it's nice and cushiony and you ain't got to worry about it breaking. So there's the bug, bug shirt, bug jacket. And then this is your five liter kitchen sink. All right. And there you go. That all fit in these pants. Now, like I said, you don't have to do this just like I did, but this is this is a basic idea. I mean, this is this is this is three times bigger than any potential small survival kit. Uh, I mean, this is a lot of gear here. Let's take those away so that it doesn't look misleading. That's a lot of gear. I mean, I would really that's a complete kit right there. So, anyway, isn't that neat? The only thing I forgot to put in there was my grabber hat, but there was room for this in one of the side pockets. Now, because that's pretty small. Now, the thing about this is, this is more than a complete kit, because you have some redundancy here. Because you have like rain protection, and then you have a tarp. These two can go, you can carry one or not the other if you want to. But it'd be nice if you had an orange tarp. And then the other redundancy, of course, is the shelter, uh, as far as our, your, how your sleeping arrangements. You don't have to have a hammock and this, because you could use this and this, and that would be a good shelter. But if you have trees, you could leave that out. You, can, you could have the hammock, and then you could carry the bug shirt. Okay, So that was kind of a redundancy type thing. This is a signal device. This is a look at me, hey, rescue me. This is a signal type device. Look at me, I'm here, you know, but it's a nighttime thing. Uh, but pretty much everything else kind of needs to stay. Uh, you could substitute bank line for the paracord. Maybe get by without the saw, but I would carry a saw as far as, you know, an axe and a machete is great for bushcraft and camping, but as far as survival goes, you might could get by with just a saw, especially in the summertime. All right, you got to remember you're not going to be having much of a fire. But anyway, this is pretty much it. And this is an overkill kit. This is a lot of stuff. But I mean, I think it's neat to show you how much stuff 
will fit in a pair of pants. <laughs> and that's a really neat trick. Instead of putting knee pads in there, put in, you know, shelter and, and, and a tarp for it. So, anyway, I hope this gives you ideas. Take these ideas and tailor them to your own kit. And no matter what, always be prepared. All right? So, I hope you enjoyed it. hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. Always be prepared. Don't get yourself into a sticky situation. And we shall see you in the next one.